What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Beers for Build. Will it start? That's what we're gonna figure out right now. We have an engine that as far as we know is full of water. We need to get the water out of it and then we gotta put oil in where the water was and then we gotta put all the other stuff on it that it needs and then we're gonna try and start it. Will my budget ass STI start up? That's what we're gonna figure out, stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. What is a VPN, you might ask? Well, it's a virtual private network, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'll explain it for you guys. I was in the tech industry for like, a, lo a long time, so I got this one. This is something I know about. Cars is, I'm still learning. So a VPN, the second half of ExpressVPN, is a virtual private network, and what it does is it keeps your data transmission private. And ExpressVPN not only takes your internet data and sends it through a different location, but it also encrypts it. So ExpressVPN is really valuable and really important for situations that I find myself in all the time. So say you're like at a coffee shop and you're using the Wi-Fi, or you're traveling and you're at a hotel and you're using the Wi-Fi, it is very easy for a hacker to basically emulate that router and sit their computer in the middle of the connection between you and that public Wi-Fi router. And when they do that, they can see all the data that you're sending back and forth on the internet. So all of your privacy, all of your data is lost. And when I say it's easy to do that, like I've done that before in tests in a private setting and it takes like 20 minutes to learn how to do it. So imagine how vulnerable your information is when you're in a public situation. Do you guys know that I got expelled from high school for hacking computers? I'll tell you about that sometime. But anyways, with ExpressVPN, you don't have to worry about that because your data is encrypted. So if they do see what's going through, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook and they can't decrypt it, which is perfect. 100% security, 100% privacy. It's also a great tool to stop data collection. If you don't want any of these large websites or government agencies or anything collecting a bunch of data on you, that stops all of that too. And it's great for content unblocking. So if you're traveling, like I'm going to Japan soon and I wanna be able to watch my shows on my different streaming services and stuff like that, if any of them happen to be uh, geographically blocked, you can tell it that you're coming from somewhere else and then boom, you're back in and you get to watch your show. ExpressVPN is very easy and convenient to use. They have consistently the fastest speeds of any VPN service, which is fantastic, and they have 24-7 customer support. So guys, find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description or go to expressvpn.com slash build. Go check it out today. Find out how you can get three months free. Thanks to ExpressVPN for keeping my internet safe and for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. All right, getting down to it, guys. Uh, we're gonna try and walk you through what we would do in a flood damage car, or, I mean, what we are doing and how we go about it, why we go about it with a flood damage engine like this to try and bring it back to life. So the first thing you wanna do, you got, you got water in your oil pan. We know that from seeing it on our dipstick. If I didn't see it on the dipstick, I would still drain the oil and check it. You wanna do an oil change regardless. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get that oil out of your oil pan and the water out of your oil pan or else as soon as you try and crank this thing, it's gonna suck up the water and oil and start distributing it through your engine. So first thing, Drain your oil. And they're going through them all right now. He says it takes a very, very small amount of water to make it all milkshake. Oh, oh my God, look at all that water. Water. <laughs> oh my God, that was so much water. I cannot believe this engine isn't seized. That's going on the floor. <laughs> There's too much there. <laughs> Where's the breather? Breathe, you bastards. <laughs> I don't, no, leave it open. Yeah. I know, I was trying to get it oh, to this go. This one over here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, poor engine hanging there with us, buddy. <laughs> that was so much just pure water. Oh my God. Well, the good thing is the oil floats on the top, so it's the oil is on the engine parts. Oh yeah, that's true. And the water is in the oil pan. No wonder it was so prevalent on the <laughs> dipstick. We had so much extra. Yeah. Okay, so that all came in through the top too. Yikes. All 
right, so uh, tons of milkshakey oil and clear water, obviously a really bad sign, um, but we got through that and we got it all drained out. We popped our filter off, that was full of milkshakey oil too, which is bad because that means that um, water got into the oil galleys, but it wasn't pure water in the oil filter, which is a good thing. So anyways, um, what we're doing now is we went to the store, or Kyle is at the store right now, he's buying a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of oil so we can run multiple different cycles of clean oil through this engine to try and clean the water out. While he's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and get the spark plugs out. So this is a uh, Boxster style engine, horizontally opposed pistons. So we gotta come at it from the side to get the spark plugs out. And it's like right down there basically. All right, Kyle's back. We got a battery in there. Uh, Oscar and I got the spark plugs out. We threw some cleaning solution down there to hopefully get a little of that gunk free and blast it back out. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with oil now um, and put a new oil filter in and then we're gonna crank it and see how much stuff comes out the sides. All right, we got a fresh oil filter on there. Oil is in there. We got a new oil cap from the store. Uh, injectors are disabled. So we got no fuel and we got no spark and we have a hole where the spark goes. So let's see what shoots out of there. Nothing's shooting out. Do it again? Yeah, do it again. Normally it goes puff, puff, puff. Watch your uh, hoodie strings. I don't want you to get jacked. You didn't think it sounds good? Yeah, dude. It sounds even. Sounds even? Okay, all right. Even. This is our Subaru specialist over here. So he's helping us through this because, uh, you know, first time, not a first time working on a Subaru, I gotta remember that because of all the BRZ stuff, but yeah, first time getting this deep into it. So um, yeah, that sounds good, awesome. So next step is we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil and inspect it on the drain this time and see how it's looking. We'll see how much more water was left in it. Did you just hand tie the filter you too? You didn't run it too long, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a little bit of water. That's looking good. Yeah, and then the oil's looking a lot better. That was interesting that we got water again. Yeah, because there's, there's a, like a oh, we got it. section and pan. Yeah, we had to get it out of the galleys too. Oh yeah, you might want to crack that. All right, cool, a little bit of water and then good looking oil. A little milkshakey at the end. Ooh, I'm getting excited. All right, that's a great sign that we're getting through that stuff and the, the oil's starting to come back out clean. Um, but because oil pans aren't perfectly level, that's probably why we pushed a little bit of the water back out. So now what we're gonna do is um, drain plug back in, fresh oil filter, fresh oil again, and then we're just gonna crank it even longer, make sure we build up full oil pressure through the engine, just keep cranking it and cranking it and cranking it before we uh, cycle one more set of oil through there and try and start it up. Crank time. We're good. You can feel the compression. It's got good compression. Nice. Okay. Are we gonna reassemble it now? I think so. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start building the engine back up. So we're gonna start with the intake manifold. We don't have any of the bolts that were supposed to be here. So we're gonna use Lamborghini bolts, which automatically double the value of this Subaru, which is fantastic.
Kyle is tightening our oil drain plug. We got the intake manifold back on. We're not running the intercooler for right now. Uh, man, total pain This with this metal aftermarket um, air intake. Like that was insanely hard to get on. Just would not recommend, 10 out of 10, do not recommend. So uh, what we're trying to do is get this thing to turn on and we're just gonna run it and idle it for a little bit um, and cycle this thing through. So we have the mass airflow sensor off, that's gonna put it in a speed density tune and we're gonna be checking for any vacuum leaks if we uh, routed any of these vacuum lines a little wrong. There's actually a lot of them when you have a stock STI. So we're looking good, time for the first startup. Will it start? All right, Oscar. Ready? Will it start? Cranking? Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, that would be funny. Some spark plugs would be nice. Spark plugs. <laughs> yeah, that might be a good Spark idea. plugs and coils. A little too Boys. All right. Oh, <laughs> we, were, we were so ready for that. <laughs> okay. We installed our spark plugs and our coil packs, so got all four of them in there, tightened down. This should go a lot better now that we have spark plugs. All right. Fire up. Okay, cranking. Yeah, maybe probably feel it. Uh, injector should be good. Thinking. Try to line backwards, maybe? Are we sure we got We never it? did them. Well, hold up. All right, we added a little starter fluid. <laughs> Interesting. It runs. The um, engine sounds good. It's it does. It sounds okay. like a lot of our shit's not fully connected, but <laughs> it sounds sounds decent. Somehow good. All right, let's break some more. So some, some more of this. I mean, if our fuel system is messed up, though, I mean, it could just be uh, frozen finger. Um, we could, it could just be we have water in the fuel and water's denser than gas, so it's picking up mainly water. All right, well, let's give it a shot before that evaporates. Oh, we're on fuel density, so this being unplugged doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely not. Oh, you know what I mean there? All right, cranking. All right. Exhaust is not bad. It's a little white. Come check this out. It's not that bad. That's not a lot of condensation. Fire it up and see if you can slowly rev it. I think that's the problem with the speed density tune. I think it's good. Time to the oil. All right. Woo! Dude, that's Woo awesome. It runs. It runs. It. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we will drain the oil. Or should we drain it while it's hot? Drain it now. We'll while drain it now. Hot. We'll drain it now while it's hot. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how milkshakey this oil is. Now that it's cycled through the engine a little bit and been all churned up, it's probably gonna be a little milkshakey. I've heard it takes very little water in the oil system to be milkshake, but we can, now that it runs, we can just keep cycling oil through it until it cleans itself. Yeah, milkshake. 
It's gonna take a few cycles of oil to clean that up, but we can get it done. But this is progress. Yeah, this is good progress. Cause yeah, like I said, it does not take a lot of water in there to make that happen. Our oil recycler guys are gonna love us. All right guys, we're back for day two working on this thing. So obviously the engine is back to life, but it's not running right. Uh, you guys probably heard it die out after a little bit of a rev. That's because right now it's running on speed density. That's using manifold air pressure and stuff like that to uh, judge the amount of fuel and air and stuff like that. Because we don't have our mass airflow sensor plugged in and, uh, and we have to do that because we don't have our intercooler in. So what we're gonna do is uh, button up a couple hose clamps, a couple vacuum lines and stuff like that, install our intercooler, get that all on there. And then while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and put fresh oil in the car and then the next time we start it up we're not going to be on speed density we're not going to be on a closed loop system it's going to be actually reading the air coming through the mass airflow sensor and then the exhaust quality going out of the exhaust We got everything back in. We kind of learned some stuff as we were putting this back together. This thing doesn't really belong here. It's supposed to go uh, bolt to your intercooler, but the previous owner put some sound deadening stuff here and had it go in here so he could run a gauge out of here. What I think this was, I think this is a story of someone had a WRX that they modified and then they sold it kind of in the middle of the mile range to somebody that didn't really want a modified one. So they spent some time unmodifying it and taking the mods off. That's really what we've kind of seen throughout this car. So to get started right now, you know, we're gonna get it back to just kind of how it was previously, running and driving well. And then we're gonna think about which modifications to do to this thing. Uh, you know, I've been told that there's a lot of simplification that we can do and uh, other stuff like that so that's good to go uh, we've got fresh oil in it so we're gonna go ahead and start her up and see how she sounds All right, so we're running using the mass airflow sensor now, which is good. Uh, the computer sees that there's only one fault, which is a engine coolant temperature sensor, I believe. We need to look into that and figure out what's going on. But it is running a little bit rough, so we have some fine tuning to do, certainly. But uh, it still runs, which is good. We're gonna go ahead now and check and see how bad the oil looks. Most likely probably gonna take three or four more flushes, would be my guess. It's starting to run really nice, actually. A little bit of bad stuff on the bottom, because the, uh, the, um, the water is going to sink to the oil, but we're getting much cleaner looking oil, um, even just on our third flush. This is our third flush. Well, all right then. We're gonna have to do a little bit of research tonight to figure out the coolant temp sensor and possibly have to buy a new one because I'm pretty positive we have that plugged in um, and we'll diagnose the running rough. But for right now, one thing that we can make sure that we get done is let's just run a couple more cycles of oil. I think I got four more oil changes worth of oil to do here. So we're just gonna throw it on time-lapse oil in the top, new filter, run the car for like 60 seconds, whatever, like what we just did, and then we're gonna drain it again and just keep cleaning the oil through the system. so we did three more oil changes on this thing and cycled it through on the third one when we drained the oil it seemed pretty decent it's not 100 percent perfect but it's getting very close so i'm happy about that on the bad side it is still running rough and i think that there's a couple things that we need to look at one of them is it's throwing an error code for the engine coolant temperature sensor so we need to uh we need to go in and fix that it's located behind the alternator and we can go in and uh and check that out make sure it's plugged in make sure it's working or replace it and the other thing is on a flood car you could get water in the fuel or anytime you buy an auction car, uh, the fuel sits around, sometimes for a very long time. We don't know how long this car was sitting. It definitely went to a shop before it came to us, so that adds time. So I think changing out the fuel, draining all the fuel, and doing that would be a good idea. Now, you also wanna check your diff and your transmission when you buy a flood car, because those could be uh, filled with water as well. We checked ours, and the fluids are good in those. Uh, I forgot to mention that we did that yesterday. So the, the gas is the last thing. We didn't see any water intrusion marks or anything like that, but just old gas can be bad enough. So we're going to do the, all those things and uh, hopefully it's going to run a little bit better tomorrow. 
So that's gonna be the end of our work day today. Now I've seen a lot of comments of people concerned that we've dropped the Huracan or whatever and you, you notice that Oscar isn't here for a lot of stuff. Oscar's still working full time on the Huracan in the other shop. We're doing reassembly, getting things back together and a little bit of like just fine tuning stuff, making sure we're good to go on the street. But you will see this build at some point get interrupted by a Huracan episode and that's gonna be a continuing thing throughout the channel because it's our race car. So we gotta go racing with it and we'll probably break it and we'll be fixing it and all that good stuff. So uh, don't think that we're not planning on using it. We still, the schedule is a schedule. We're going to uh, Dino Tune, racing Rob Dom, going off to Florida, racing with Tavares and Cletus and all that good stuff. So you will see that coming up. Don't worry about it. All right, that's it. That's a wrap. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for joining us. Peace. <laughs>